Hey, hey, back for another vinyl update, people. So what's been going on out there? Everybody having a good time? It's raining here quite heavy currently at the present moment uh, on a, what is today, Tuesday? Got some stuff here that I picked up recently. Uh, got a Rhino 2017 calendar. Uh, me and Kat both, both got one of these. Um, we went to Everybody's Records in Cincinnati, one of the places we like to go, uh, record shopping. And, uh, they gave us these free, um, calendars. So, there's what the inside, and it has, like, release dates of records and stuff. It's really cool calendars, so, thanks Everybody's Records. That was really nice. So, we went to Everybody's and we went to Shake It Records, uh, both in Cincinnati, you've heard me. Me and Kat both talk about those before. And, um, went to, uh, this is a record I've been wanting for a long, long time. Uh, and I've passed it up, well, every time I've went to, uh, somewhere that's had it, I've passed it up. I've seen it and not got it. So, I finally decided to get it. It's Television Marquee Moon. And I listened to this. Me and Kat both listened to this. And I'd only had like, I think, one or two songs on my iPod from it. And I hadn't realized it before, but the guy, real, the lead singer, really sounds like the, same, the singer for um, the Violent Femmes. Uh, like amazingly close to the same... So, I mean, that's not a bad thing, because I like the Violent Femmes, but I just wasn't expecting him to sound like, like that, I guess. I don't know. Was, and at times, uh, the lead singer's phrasing sort of reminds me of um, Patti Smith, which they both performed at CBGB's at around the same time. So, I don't know if that's just a coincidence or what, but anyway, it's a good album. Um it says jazz for the punk rock set, is what it says on the hype sticker. So, and then this Winger album, I picked up quite a while back. I uh, was just waiting to show it with similar type stuff. In the Heart of the Young, uh, it says Winger 2 here at the bottom. And uh, there they are on the back. I don't know if I mentioned this before. I might have mentioned it in a video where I showed another Winger album. But I got to meet Winger one time at a uh, record store called Dingleberries that used to be around in this area. There were a few locations, which they are no longer, unfortunately. And um, me and my uh, friend at the time got to meet them. They were in the back of this little record store. They had some tables set up to sign autographs and stuff, and I had their first album on cassette and um, for them to sign. <clears throat> which they did, but the line was moving along, you know, in front of them, and, and they were more worried about what they were going to drink or what the they, the guy brought them, the runner brought them instead of what they wanted or whatever than the fans that were there to see them. I mean, they wouldn't pay much attention at all to the fans. So, I mean, I got their autographs, and I thought it was cool nevertheless to look back at it, though. I was like, you know, that's... Not the best way to treat your fans. Um, and I took a picture. I, I should have got the picture out of me in front of the, their limousine. Looking all goofy and stuff. So anyway. Uh, this next record is a record that... Back when I went to Florida. Uh, I don't know if it was the first time I was at Flo in Florida or the second time. I seen this record at a thrift store. And I don't know why I didn't get it, because just based on what it looks like, I should have picked it up anyway. And being at a thrift store, I'm sure it wasn't didn't cost that much. But I've wanted this record ever since then, and never, ever, ever seen it. Found it this weekend at Everybody's Records, and I had to pick it up. And I think this is a variation of the cover, but I'm not positive. Uh, it's Juicy Lucy, and it's like a... Sort of blues rock. I think this came out in 1969. And, um, just, I didn't, you know, <laughs> I wasn't prepared to find it because, you know, like I said, that's when you find stuff, is when you're not looking. 
There's the, it's on Adco Records, with which a lot of the artists that's on Adco, you know, are really good. And there it is. Uh, some of the other artists they have here, Iron Butterfly, Cream, which I have uh, the Iron Butterfly one, Vanilla Fudge. So, yeah, I was really glad to find this, like I said, and... Um, you know, I don't know what the chances are. I don't know how rare this record is, but it was just the fact that I wanted it so bad. Yeah, six, September of 69. So, yeah, Juicy Lucy. Did I show the back? There's the back. So, yeah, that was a great find right there. And then, uh, I'll put it back in the sleeve. And then, um, at everybody's... Uh, the first thing I did when I got when we got there is went through the reissues because there was a few things that I didn't get last time, and I was hoping it would still be there, and um, it actually was. Faster Pussycats first album been reissued. They re reissued. I'm guessing the whole discography, although I've only seen the first two albums, uh, and this was my favorite one. I have this on, had this on cassette at one time. It's just black vinyl. And, um, also have the CD. Uh, Faster Pussycat is named after the Russ Meyer film, Faster Pussycat Kill Kill. And if you haven't seen that movie, you really should, because it's, it's an awesome movie. Uh, actually, any Russ Meyer movie is awesome, as far as I'm concerned. But, um... Yeah, I always like this band. It's like one of the bands. I think Faster Pussycat and L.A. Guns pretty much came out about the same time <laughs> or got record deals at the same time. But uh, the first single was Don't Change That Song, and there's some clips in the very beginning of that, actually throughout the video from uh, Faster Pussycat, Kill Kill. And then uh, I think the second single was um, Bathroom Wall, which I love that video. It's sort of like a black and white, grainy-looking video. Uh, I think that's the only videos that they had that I remember. Uh, in the song Babylon, it's got like a little intro there that's sort of sort of unusual for the time, or at least I thought it was. This came out in 87. Um, so yeah. Faster Pussycat. Some good stuff right there if you like some 80s metal. It's like real sleazy metal. And then, uh, this was also something that I wanted that they had last time, and I was hoping it was still there, because every time I've seen these, which has been very few and far between, and it's usually been at the mall, as the places I've seen them, they've been so ungodly overpriced. It's like, I'm not paying that kind of money for, for whatever, you know. So these were really good prices. Guns and Roses, Use Your Illusion 1. And I've got almost all of Guns N' Roses now. There's still, if I can get this out here, there's still a few that I'm missing. The, these are double albums, of course. Well, I can't say of course. If you don't know Guns N' Roses, you wouldn't know they were double albums. But it's on Geffen Records, upside down. And I have the CDs, you know, but it's just, like I've said in numerous videos, the vinyl. Some records you just have to have on vinyl. There's just no way around it. So, and these are those records. Uh, and this is, um, like I said, Use Your Illusion 1. And it's funny because these weren't gatefold records. I really would have expected them to be gatefold. Um, they just have both records slid in there. Um, the singles that was on this one was uh, Don't Cry, which is the original lyrics. Uh, Live and Let Die. Um, November Rain was like one of the biggest hits for them. It's one that people always say they really like. Uh, and then Dead Horse was also uh, a video. So Guns N' Roses Use Your Illusion 1. And Use Your Illusion 1 and 2 came out the same day. And they were number one and number two on the charts. Which I don't think that's ever been done before. I'm not positive, but it seems like I've heard that. So anyway, there's Use Your Illusion 2. And uh, this one, for some reason, the few times I have seen it, it's been a little cheaper 
than the other one and it, this one actually is a dollar cheaper than the other one which i don't know how they get uh, what the significance of a dollar more or a dollar less is i i the only disappointment i have with these and it's very minimal is i wish they were wish it was colored vinyl just because i really like colored vinyl and these are just black vinyl i mean just to have the record alone i really shouldn't even say that because i've waited so long to get these um at a good price you know i could have like i said spent an enormous amount of money and had them a long time ago but to me that's not you know i i to a certain degree i'm a thrifty shopper but also to a certain degree i if i want something bad enough i don't care how much it is so you know it, it just varies but um anyway um civil war was a i don't know if that was an actual single or not i know they played that at uh on Farm Aid. Yesterday's was a video uh, and Knocking on Heaven's Door, which this is the studio version. I actually like the, the live version. They played from uh, Live at the Ritz uh, in 88. Uh, they played that one on the radio a lot, and I like that version better than the, the studio one on here. Uh, and then, let's see, um, So Fine, which I think that's one of the first... Um, one of the first songs that Guns N' Roses wrote together as a band. It seems like I'd heard that. And then Estranged was a video, like one of the most expensive videos made up to that point. It's really overblown, for sure. I mean, it's a good video. It's a good song. Uh, and You Could Be Mine, which was on the Terminator, was it Terminator 2 soundtrack? And that's one of my, it's one of my favorite uh, Guns N' Roses songs from the Use Your Illusions album. Um, they also had Don't Cry on here with the alternate lyrics. So yeah, Guns N' Roses, Use Your Illusions 1 and 2. So that's all I have to show in this vinyl update. Um, please subscribe if you haven't. And uh, I answered a lot of my comments today on my two previous, two and three previous videos. Uh, I appreciate everyone commenting and watching. Uh, thanks for all my new subscribers. I have a few new ones. Um, I hope you guys really enjoy what you see because you never know what I'm going to show on these on these uh, vinyl updates um, because my tastes vary probably more than most people's tastes. So, like I said, thanks for watching and thanks for um, subbing, and um, we'll keep you posted, watching new videos and making new videos. So, we'll see you later. Ta ta.